Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring something quite interesting, a new game mode. We haven't seen a new game mode in World of Warships since August 2016 when they added Epicenter. Now you can see how the buffs work. Buffs, buff areas get activated two minutes after they appear. Any player that seizes an, an area gets two buffs. Allied ships located within 12 km radius from any seized area will get one buff. And if there's uh, opponent ships inside the cap then uh, whoever has more ships uh, gets the gets the buff but that's usually very rare because as you can see the caps are incredibly small so such things generally doesn't really happen it's I, I haven't seen it happen once yet but I, I guess they have in case multiple ships enter the same area very rare though now what's important is how these buffs work they pop up on the map and obviously pretty much everyone charges for them. There's three kinds of buffs. The exclamation mark buff gives you a concealment buff. Uh, the shell looking one gives you faster uh, gun and torpedo reload and the health basically the cross sign uh, gives you a, a permanent heal. It's permanent, it lasts throughout the entire match and of course what's important is that all of these buffs stack. So the first one I rush into is this concealment buff uh, that is about to activate. I'm surprised it doesn't show the timer. It might be because it's a replay and the timers aren't really properly working in the replay. But there is an actual countdown timer. They pop up and then two minutes later they activate. And whoever's inside the buff gets two stacks. As you can see it says buff seized and I got two, two of those buff signs underneath my ship. So in this case all of these buffs work so that they give you a 5% uh, increase of whatever. In this case I gained 5% concealment times 2 aka a 10% concealment buff. If you enter a reload zone you get 5% reload or 10% if you're the one who activates the buff meaning you get both of the buffs. Note that when we activated this uh, area all our allies within 12 kilometers also gained one buff but the ships that activate gains two buffs. So obviously it's always an advantage to try to be the one who activates it because it gives you twice the rewards. Now, um, the healing one works a bit differently in the sense that it gives you a 0.05% permanent heal. And all of these buffs stack up to six times. So you can potentially, you can get 30% uh, faster reload or 30% faster torp reload, or you can get 30% um, better concealment. And if you manage to capture every single heal, so you get six stacks of healing, then you can also get 0.03% permanent healing. Now that's obviously a pretty, or sorry, 0.3% since they give 0.05 each. So combined all six give you 0.3% healing. And this is obviously a pretty big deal because um, the default battleship heal heals for 0.5%. So a permanent 0.3 is kind of like having 60% of a battleship heal, except it never runs out. It's permanently on. So if you've got a 100k health ship, you're healing for 300 health per second. All of these buffs are, of course, incredibly powerful. Um, I've tried them multiple different ships. They are very, very powerful. And that's why, of course, this game mode is called Arms Race. You're racing to get these buffs as soon as possible, secure them for your team, secure them for yourself, and uh, before the enemy secures theirs. And it's a massive brawl fight over who gets these buffs. And uh, it, it does have a bit of a steamroll mechanic going on, basically. One side gets a huge amount of buffs, a huge advantage, and it's very hard to recover or come back from this. This does happen and it is a downside, but it's pretty damn fun. It is pretty damn fun. At this point, that's the healing sign. I'm trying to get up there. I don't think I'm going to get there. I think the Haruguma is going to be the one who activates this heal. So he's going to get two buffs now and I'm going to get a single buff because I'm not inside the area, I'm outside, but I am within proximity. So now I'm permanently healing for 0.05% every second for the rest of the match. This Fletcher is trying to push and get the reload buff. And this is, of course, something that I've seen a lot on BTS, is that people are willing to take these insane risks to try to get these buffs. Like, people do the dumbest stuff just to get them, which is kind of understandable, and I've done it myself, because it's very tempting to rush in there and try to get them, because these, pu these buffs are strong, and the more you stack of them, the stronger you become. So it's very, very tempting to rush in and try to secure them, regardless of the cost. Um, this Fletcher of course paid for it since I radared and because 
well, at this point my Wooster is already in a pretty disgusting spot because I was very lucky and the first thing I caught, the first buff I got at the start was uh, the two concealment buffs, aka a, buff, a concealment circle. So my concealment was already very, very low. And at this point, since we managed to secure this flank, now we're just getting, uh, I'm just stacking on more and more buffs. I got a reload buff there, uh, so my guns are already reloading faster, and there's a healing buff on the left. I'm kind of tempted to go and take it, since then I would have three healing buffs as well, but it looks like the lion is actually turning in to secure it. Putting as much pressure on this Conqueror as it possibly can. Securing kills is pretty important in this, because if they get the heal buffs, they will eventually heal back to full HP, because, well, it never runs out. It is permanent. It looks like the Lion is going to secure the healing buff, so I'll just be within range to get one buff, not two, and it's time to start dealing with the rest of the enemy team. My team is kind of struggling on the rest of the flank, but overall... We've managed to secure this flank, we managed to secure all these buffs, so it's not like our army is that weak. The main issue right now is that we need to get to the center of the map and secure all the rem remaining buffs there to try to strengthen our ships. It's also important to note that when 10 minutes has passed, a capture circle will spawn in the middle. And it works very much like epicenter, basically. If there's someone in there, you can't cap it. Um, you can reset the cap and so forth. It works like a basic cap. But if you do manage to secure it, then you start gaining massive points. It's something like 10 points every second. It, it's it's an insane buff, and it will pretty much ins it will snowball the game in your favor very very quickly. So this game mode focuses on putting a lot of emphasis on securing these. Um, buff circles and when the cap arrives making sure the enemy can secure the cap circle or taking it for yourself it's quite fast paced in that sense like th the action starts from the get go because everyone wants the buffs and people are willing to risk a lot more for these buffs than they tend to be for normal capture points because they've seen the effect it has on their ship there's two reload buffs in the middle and that's very tempting for me because well I already have a lot of DPM but with two reload buffs, especially if I manage to enter one of them, uh, that's a potential 15% extra reload that I could be catching. Even if I'm just within range, that's 10% potential reload. So, oh, and they just activated. Shame the timers don't show up on the replay, but normally there's a small timer uh, below the buff that counts down. And usually when the countdown hits, that's when you see people do a lot of crazy stuff to try to get those caps. Yeah, like that Haruguma, for example. He was willing to sit in the cap and try to try to cap it, even though um, there's literally a Moskva rushing in there because he was so hungry for that reload buff. Now, there are some... That's not to say it's all bright and sunny and everything is fantastic um, there are some issues most of all at least on pts playing a destroyer seems to be much easier than playing anything else the reason for this is um, destroyers most of the time are the ones who are activating the buffs so destroyers tend to really get these massive massive buffs on pre all, across all their ships every time and when you get destroyers with these buffs the game becomes so so hard uh, because they get concealment buffs like um, a Haruguma with 5km concealment, a Shima with 4km concealment, and then they get the reload buffs. On my Shima in a game earlier, I had a 1 minute 10 second reload on my 15 F3 torpedoes, plus concealment buffs. So, <laughs> it was obviously completely stupid. I was just blapping battleships left, right and center, and it doesn't matter how much you dodge when the torps reload so quickly. And it doesn't matter if you have a 300 heal per second um, when the burst damage is enough to just blap you off the face of the map. So destroyers seem monumentally strong in this, mostly because they are the ones who are activating it. The Wooster, it, I needed a few tries to get good games. Uh, getting that, con Starting a game by getting a concealment buff is such a huge advantage because, well, you outspot everyone by 10% compared to what you would normally do. And on the Wooster... Especially, it really helps out. Which brings me to another criticism. Oh, by the way, the timer is about to hit 10 minutes, so you can see the circle is about to spawn. And pop, there we go. Capture the key area. Well, it's I, su I, su I assume it's supposed to say key with a Y, but capture the key area, and now it's the race is on. You need to cap and hold this middle, and the enemy team has to contest it. 
a lion pops up at a really awkward angle. I wasn't expecting him to go around that way, so I'm pushing behind the island before his turrets can turn, and what I want to do is capture these concealment circles. The Haragoma is running around capturing those reload buffs, so I'm getting 10% reload out of that. Meanwhile, I'm personally capping both or attempting to cap both of these concealment circles. And when you get to end game in your ship and you have stacked up a lot of these buffs, that's when things start getting really, really silly, which you will see soon. What I mentioned, one of the downsides though, is that uh, the buff spawn are asymmetric, which is something I don't like uh, because many of the games have been decided by just having bad or good RNG at the start. Uh, depending on what buffs you got. Like, I, I've started a game where I didn't get any buffs on my side of the map, and the enemy team on their side got all of them. Uh, my teammates on the other side got a bunch, but I didn't end up getting any. And because the buffs are so powerful, it was such a huge disadvantage to start the game from, and it ended up snowballing, and the enemy team won the game very quickly, and those situations are quite frustrating. My concealment is now 7.6. I got 20% extra concealment. Now I'm gonna capture this second concealment circle, and my concealment is 6.7 kilometers on a booster. And I'm self-healing, as you can see, my health is ticking up, and I got the reload bonuses going as well. So, the Zao, I'm undetected as I pop up from the Zao's broadside at 7 kilometers. I waited until he engaged the booster down south to make sure he's in a crossfire that he can't really deal with, and I'm trying to see if I could get some citadels on him. The Zao's citadel is quite trolly. And I, when he's moving this slow, you have to aim a bit higher, because your shells tend to still splash in the water. That's a bit of a bug with the targeting system in this game. But we do finish off the kill very, very quickly. The enemy team, of course, has to push in, because we hold this control point. They have to push in, they have to contest. Uh, they cannot at any point allow us to finish capping, because at this point most people should know that the game is about to end very, very quickly. Um, what I was saying, yeah, the asymmetric spawns of the buffs is something I don't like. Um, there's a lot of RNG already involved, but when the, when the enemy... When, when you spawn as a destroyer on your side of the map, and the enemy starts the game by getting 20% concealment buff, and suddenly your Shimakaza gets outspotted by a Haragumo, <laughs> there's not really that much you can do. It just becomes very silly very quickly. So that's something I would like for them for Wargaming to implement, and that's mirrored buff spawns. If you give a 10% reload buff to the enemy team, um, you don't have to give the exact same buff to my team, but at least give some buff. Don't make it so that uh, the enemy up north gets all the buffs and your team down south doesn't get any, whereas your team on the, let's say, east flank gets a bunch of them, uh, because it leads to these steamrolls, these flanks getting rolled very quickly and the game's ending extremely quickly. I understand that that's kind of the point of arms race. You race to buff your ship up as much as possible and then you race to control and cap middle. It's The idea is a fast-paced arcade mode and I love that idea. Um, but it being unfair is not very enjoyable. It can be fast-paced and fun without being unfair and I don't think that um, the unfair spawns are really required to make this game mode enjoyable. Worth noting, of course, is that right now this is a separate mode, meaning for some of you guys who are like, oh, I hate arms race, I never want to play it. Well, you don't have to. It's a separate mode. You can select it, just like you, you select between co-op and ranked and uh, random battles, you can also select um, this arms race mode right now. I, buff, I picked up another reload mode now, so you might notice that my reload is actually really, really stupid. And that's why I'm willing to pick a fight with this Conqueror, because Conqueror has 32mm armor, and Wooster with IFHE, plus all these reload mods. It's kind of stupid. My reload is, what, 2.7 seconds, I think? No, it's, it's still around 3 seconds. Oh well, AR hasn't kicked in yet. Just wait until my AR kicks in. You think this is stupid? It gets even dumber. He's actually using his heal, but my DPM is so heavy that not even not even the Royal Navy battleship heal can outheal the DPM that this guy is under. Wooster in this game mode can quickly become extremely disgusting, as you're seeing right now. The Conqueror dies. At this point I'm in a bit of a crossfire, so I push behind the island. I'm expecting to get radar, so I'm ready to counter radar as soon as it happens. There's the radar, I instantly counter radar. There's a Wooster picking a fight with me. I tried to see if I can AP him, I'm not really expecting it though. No, we're not getting the pens we want, so I quickly switch to HE. At 
this point, I'm willing to take a one versus one happily, even though he has a pretty big significant health advantage, I'm willing to take a one versus one basically pure DPM battle, because I have so many buffs. I have the full reload buffs, I have the concealment buffs, well concealment doesn't matter here, but I got the heals as well, and a one versus one like this, I'll happily take it, because well, my DPM is absolutely disgustingly strong, and this guy notice he tries to angle nose in, but uh, I, I don't think that's the correct choice, because I will just happily instantly melt him. Trying to see what the Wooster is planning to do, he's coming around a corner, no, appears he's going around the other way. Note that I'm, of course, constantly regenerating health, thanks to the buffs. I am being hydroed, I think. So I'm turning a switch to AP, and I'm expecting this guy to pop around the corner. He has 43,000 health. I have 13,000 health. You would think that this is pretty clear-cut, but in this game mode, in arms race, it's never clear cut. <laughs> you don't know what buffs the other guy has. And he does make a mistake of giving too much broadside, which I punish instantly. And then I switch to that HE, and with this incredibly fast reload and the IFHE, it's just monstrous Dukka. Like some of the scariest firepower you will ever see in this game right now. And he instantly disappears. And that full HP Wooster, pretty much in a blink of eye, disappeared. And there's a Fletcher left at this point, trying to pick a fight with me, but I mean, this DPM. This reload at this point is 2.5 seconds on these guns. It's absolutely stupid. One of my viewers from my stream is actually in my chat, as you maybe can notice. Sadly, I don't end up getting the Fletcher kill, so I end up with a mere 6 kills. The game ends 275,000 damage, 6 kills, 12 citadels, only 10 fires. So, not that impressive in that sense, well, RNG-wise, not really much I can do about the fires. Team score-wise, that's when it gets a bit silly. 3,900 base XP. I can't quite round it up to 4,000 yet, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some absolutely insane numbers in this mode, because, well, there's gonna be a lot of super-powered ships at the end, and those super-powered ships are probably gonna slaughter a lot of other ships. So, there's a lot of potential for some really monstrous games in this mode. Because, well, well you basically take any ship you can imagine, any tier 10 or tier 9 ship, and you slap 30% reload, 30% concealment, and permanent heal on it, and the results are always gonna be pretty damn absurd. That does highlight something I'm not too big of a fan of though, and that's the fact that, once again, this game mode is restricted to tier 9 and tier 10. Why? I don't know, because I think this game mode could be hilarious in lower tiers. I, I could imagine tier 6 in this game mode would be so much fun. Um, there's a bunch of different tiers that could be a ton of fun. So why are Wargaming, once again, restricting it only to the top tiers. And I mean, if it's restricted to tier 9 and tier 10, then people are pretty much only going to be playing tier 10s unless they're playing like the premium tier 9s. So I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of all. Please, please Wargaming, stop trying to force everything to be a tier 10. We have so much tier 10 content already. Why can't arms race be more flexible? Why can't there be more tiers than just the high tiers in it? I'm really not a fan of this tunnel vision of the tier 10. That's that's one of my major major concerns. Detailed report wise, once again, we see some really st stupid stuff. For example, my damage received is 94,000, which is pretty much as much as a tier 10 battleship. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would have gotten a dreadnought. You sadly do, you don't earn any achievements in this, but I'm pretty sure we, we crossed the line for the dreadnought there. Um, fire chances I mentioned not the best, but really we didn't need it because the DPM was so disgusting. Some major points I really want to make about this game mode though, um, some changes I would like to see. Um, DDs tend to perform really well and uh, I, I've pretty much seen five destroyers in every single game I played and that's because well the destroyers are the first one into the, into the buffs so they always get twice the buffs as pretty much anyone else and they tend to perform really really well because of that that's probably something wargaming want to be looking into um, another issue is the asymmetric spawn points now i don't mind if 
there's different spawns for different sides like the enemy team gets a 10% concealment buff in return you get a 10% DPM buff on your side I'm perfectly okay with this uh, but what I don't like is one side gets all the buffs and the other side doesn't get any buffs because that usually leads to that flank quickly being a run and then your team gets surrounded and collapses and so forth it's um, the game is supposed to be fun uh, and having this kind of frustrating annoying start where the enemy gets a bunch of buffs and you get none that's not very enjoyable and i don't think it's necessary i think this game can be a lot of fun with have without having this random oh well the spawns can be random as long as they're equal that is my point so that's something i think they should absolutely change um besides that though it is a ton of fun i mean it's a it's a it's a different mode you can select, so no one should be complaining about being forced to play it. You just select it like a different mode. It's, um, it's a new, fun arcade mode that I think will be quite popular. It, does, they will, it will require some fine-tuning, though, as I mentioned. The buffs being restricted only to top tier and DDs probably overperforming quite a bit. Um, that will of course remain to be seen. It is still PTS and it is still early, so hopefully Wargaming will get the day to day need, but this is just my first impressions. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys later.